special order is particularly relevant because this is the third anniversary of the t shooting in Tucson that took six lives and injured 13 people, including our colleague, uh, Gabby Giffords. And when I say our colleague, it's our colleague of all of us here in the House of Representatives. But as a member of the class of 06, of which Giffords uh, is, uh, we take special uh, significance in this day because she was one of our prize members. We all loved her and we all miss her. Uh, the class of 06 is a close class and we're joined here I know by the, one of the presidents of the class of 06, Mr. Yarmouth and, and Mr. Perlmutter, an active member of the class of 06 and there'll be other members here as well. Uh, we wanted to express our um, remembrances of, of Gabby and particularly uh, the article that she wrote that's in today's New York Times, an op-ed called The Lessons of Physical Therapy. And it's a very touching article that talks about her recovery and her indomitable spirit where she tells her about her, her exercises every day to get back her strength and to be able to recover speech and, and physical mobility. Uh, today, in fact, she skydived. Uh, she is a great spirit who has not let the um, problems that she's experienced uh, limit her in any ways more than they, than they have. And she's trying to overcome these obstacles and teach people that they can't overcome obstacles. But she also, after le leaving the House, after serving five years as a great colleague, um, and coming back here on August the 1st of 2011 in what was a very memorable moment on this floor to vote on the debt ceiling, which was a close vote, and came back with, in case her vote was needed. And on that day, I, I was out at the airport greeting a very close person in my life and coincidentally was there when she came off the airplane. Uh, saw Gabby and was able to, to, to see her for the first time since the January 8 uh, incident. And uh, then she was on the floor and of course we all got to see her. But she came back and made that effort and to contribute to, and she thought about how can she contribute more. And after Newtown she knew that she contribute more by starting an organization with her great husband Captain Mark Kelly, uh, rely uh, reasonable solutions on firearms and, and gun laws. And she tried to really lead the effort and to make America's laws more sensible, uh, to save other people from the tragedy that she experienced, as did uh, the six victims that day uh, that died and the others that were injured, including Congressman Barber, who had led us in a moment of silence earlier today on the floor with the members of the Arizona delegation. Uh, so we wanted to remember that day, which is significant. It's a significant day in congressional history and American history because that was an assault on Congress people, meeting with their constituents, open government, uh, the, the democratic form of government, and meeting and listening. And uh, Gabby was engaging in a uh, Congress uh, neighborhood meeting at the grocery there. Now, Gabby was a member of the NRA. I don't know if she is now. Uh, I passed the right to carry bill in Tennessee because I think you can have reasonable laws that allow people to defend themselves, but there can, there's reasonableness. And the problem we've had has been reasonableness. And, and, and what Gabby's uh, effort with, Mar with her husband Mark is reason responsible solutions. It's not banning guns. It's responsible solutions. Mental health is certainly one of those uh, issues that has been raised, and yet we've, and our budgets have cut mental health with the budgets that we've had up here. And some have blamed uh, the response has been about uh, uh, violent games that children might play or be exposed to. Uh, uh, those weren't around when Charles Edward Whitman went to the tower in Austin, Texas and killed 17 people and wounded 32. That wasn't the cause of it. It's something unfortunately uniquely American. It's a uniquely American problem, and studies have shown the U.S. homicide rates are six nine times greater than the rates in other high-income countries, and they're driven by firearm homicide rates that are 19.7 times higher. In the 27 countries that were studied of higher industrialized countries, 80% of all firearm deaths occurred in the United States, and 86% of women killed by firearms were United States women, and 87% of the children were United States children. We all loved Gabby. We miss Gabby. She was the star of our class, and it was before uh, the three years ago on the 8th of January that she was the star of our class, and we all knew it. We all loved her. 
Uh, I want to thank each of my colleagues for joining us. I want to thank Abby for her service and her continued service. Uh, she's an American hero.